realize that there are two schools of thought. And uh, this is demonstrated uh, probably as well in medicine as in education. In medical science, annually we spend billions of dollars in research. We spend trillions of dollars in the application of that among the practitioners, the hospitals, literally trillions of dollars, consuming a large percentage of our budget on human well-being. Now, I've known many medical doctors, scholars, professors at medical universities. I have children involved in that kind of research with certified degrees. And it's of interest to all of us because we want to be as well as we can. There are two basic schools of thought. One is the evolutionary paradigm, which envisioned a Big Bang, an explosion of that producing debris gives us the orientation of our value in an evolutionary humanistic enterprise of the universal experiment we call evolution arriving ultimately in the mind of man but this offers no hope and considers the human body as just a machine to target and basically an evolving piece of mechanism at that on the other hand we have the creation model showing that from the origin of the entire system in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth the earth was without form and void darkness was upon the face of the deep the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said let there be light and there was light on day number two he created a firmament and we're going to discuss with our special guest the impact of such a firmamental canopy, greater atmospheric pressure because of the smaller diameter of the earth, then the expansion of that at the days, during the days of the flood and the days of Peleg, and how this now applies to our decaying context and the renewing of this in the future millennium. How would this affect the mind of man? In our current context with only one atmosphere of pressure, 14.7 pounds per square inch. How does this affect the assimilation of oxygen throughout the human system and especially in the brain? How does this affect the attention, the retention of brain cells in fetal development? And how does this affect the entire ecosystem? For it is all one grand design. Having laid that foundation, Hopefully you, you got all the principles I was discussing. I'd like to now welcome my dear and personal friend, medical doctor Dale Peterson. Dr. Peterson, such a joy to have you back on the program. Good to be here, Carl. You've been with me many times on the program and many times with me excavating dinosaurs. And uh, over the years, we've discussed various breakthroughs that you've made. Uh, now, your background, you were a professor in addition to your medical training. Professor at uh, University of Wisconsin Medical School, is that correct? Uh, yes, I was. Also University of Oklahoma. All right. And in fact, you were the, uh, the president of uh, the Standard Practitioners Medical Doctors? Oklahoma Academy of Family Physicians. Oh, that's, that's marvelous. A and then you practiced standard, practiced standard medicine for about how long? Uh, for about two decades. Then? You had some insight. Well, I first met you in 1984, and I had a very busy family practice at that point. Oh, yes. Your, using, your own clinic. Using traditional With, with various medicine. associates, yes. And, uh, but I began as I understood more and more about the creation model yes. and began to see how that would apply to sickness and health. I began to have incredible internal turmoil. Because I began to realize that just as there are two schools of thought in the biological sciences, the geological sciences, there are two schools of thought in the medical sciences. Okay. Now, one school of thought says that you and I are the products of millions of years of evolutionary development. And a big accident. And a big accident. And when things go wrong, it means that the body has somehow malfunctioned 
and it's the enemy, and we must beat it into submission somehow, whether that's okay. chemically, surgically, uh, radiation. And there are times when things have gone so awry that those modalities are needed and can be yes, helpful. Understood. But they should never be viewed as the first line of defense, which oh, they right. are in our society. Yes. On the, the, that school of thought would say, and I've heard this numerous times in medical lectures, that the reason my father died of a heart attack is because he had not evolved far enough past his hunter-gatherer stage to survive in an informational world. Oh, so tragic. On the other hand, the other point of view is that the body was carefully and wonderfully designed yes. to function within certain parameters. Now, you and I know that most of those were lost at the time of the biblical flood. Yes. But that viewpoint says that when disease occurs, the body is not the enemy. Right. The body is our greatest ally in the fight against disease because and it wants to restore because and repair of all itself. the incredible intrinsic healing mechanisms yes. God has placed inside it. They simply need to be supported. So the closer we can return the body to those conditions God originally had in mind, the better it's going to function. Oh, very well. Uh, profoundly stated. <coughs> Dale, let's let the audience in on what we're talking about. This is a schematic chart showing the design of the universe, the cosmos, and the earth in pristine context, with the internal structure not disrupted into uh, volcanic radioactive discharge, but instead the diameter of the earth being slightly smaller meaning uh, on a practical medical basis, which is your area of proficiency, you would have greater atmospheric pressure. And at Texas A&M, they found that if you double the atmospheric pressure, you triple the assimilation of available oxygen. As a medical doctor and practitioner uh, and professor, what would that do to the body if you could triple the assimilation of available oxygen? I am aware of at least four distinct reasons that individuals age. Okay. One of them is called mitochondrial decline. All right. Mitochondria are the energy factories of our cells. Yes. Every cell in the body has mitochondria. Some have more than others. Liver cells are rich with these energy factories. The heart muscle is rich with these energy factories. But they are dependent upon oxygen for producing energy. Yes. And over time, uh, due to the fact that we live in a relatively low oxygen environment com right. uh, relative to what it was prior yes. to the flood, uh, in the design, those phase. mitochondria wear out. They decline, and that causes us to age. Diseases like congestive heart failure, it's a disease of mitochondrial decline. These are profound statements. All right, but w what else? might be affected by this. You said there were four that you were aware of. Well, there, there are four things, and they all can relate to the collapse at the time of the flood. Yes. One of them is free radical damage. Yes. Uh, free radicals are unbalanced oxygen molecules. They are not inherently harmful because we need oxygen to be reactive. On the set, we have numerous fires going. They wouldn't be going if it were not for Certainly. reactive oxygen species yes. that are driving that reaction. They drive it in our body as well. When we burn our food, we use free radicals, and free radicals are produced. But God gave us internally a protective mechanism to deal with those free radicals yes. so that they would be neutralized, they would be balanced, and they would not attack cells, uh, cell membranes, DNA, cholesterol yes. in the human body, and everything would go along fine. But with the collapse of the canopy at the time of the flood, sunlight now coming into the atmosphere bounces off oxygen molecules, creating far more free radicals than we were yes. ever intended to deal with. And the free radicals, again, are the unbalanced oxygen molecules that hook up with errant chemistry. And so we not only get the oxygen, but we get this radical chemistry. They're the same things that cause metals to rust, 
window treatments to fade, yes. tires to dry rot, car finishes to oxidize, that yes. is fade,